I'm bringing Terraform to a an environment now. Um, we're starting pretty much from scratch over again after you know years of previous development and blah blah blah. So I was also considering, you know, should I use Terragrunt and should I just use Core Terraform? Like, what would probably be the best way to start? Especially, you know, I'm coming from some Terraform, but also some CloudFormation before, so I'm trying to just really start with the best foot forward. Um, as in regards to this conversation, that was really my only question. Yeah. I had a separate question about more so importing existing resources and, and configurations into Terraform in the most efficient way. Um, I'm sure that there's some open source tools, but I'm kind of a noob right now. So yeah. I figured I'd ask that. But yeah, those yeah. are my two questions. Julian, I, I think it depends on which provider you choose. Because, for example, if you choose M0, Terragrant is the only option. But if you choose Scalar or Terraform Cloud, then you, you, you should absolutely go with uh, Eric's uh, solution. Yeah, that, that is a consideration. Um, so choosing between Terraform uh, open source uh, or Terraform mm -hmm. native, so to say, versus Terragrunt will determine some of your options or choices for continuous delivery. So while, while currently, Oh, sorry. I was just going to say currently using Terraform cloud to host the state and deploying from the CLI just to deploy from the CLI. So yeah, if you're deploying from the CLI, then you can use Terragrunt or uh, Terraform open source, and it'll be similar. One of the things, though, these providers do, like M0 or Spacelift or Spacelift or Terraform Cloud, is they help you make sure that no change is left behind. They help you ensure a workflow for promoting or deploying those changes, like the continuous delivery of Terraform. They help you with policy enforcement and stuff like that. What the problem I see with using a lot of this, the, the, the stuff that Terragrant open source does are things that you can achieve now with policies. And if you're using Terragrant to execute those, you're actually circumventing the ability for the policies to do their job. Now, that might not be a compelling reason for you to choose one tool or another, in which case just disregard. Uh, Terragrunt was a absolutely essential tool for many users until, until more recent versions of Terraform because it solved a lot of the pain points in Terraform. Now a lot of those same pain points don't exist from our experience working with Terraform at a pretty significant scale uh, of development. Okay, yeah, that definitely helps because, um, you know, I will be kind of bringing in a development team that is not you know, the existing one, but they're going to have to manage some resources because right now I'm the only one doing it. So, um, and so I think being able to set those policies, you know, using Terraform Cloud, I'm only using the CLI to deploy right now just because it's what I've been most comfortable with, having fully explored Terraform Cloud. But if it presents those advantages, I'll certainly dig deeper. Well, if you're using Terraform Cloud with Terraform Cloud open source, uh then Sentinel will still be able to enforce certain kinds of policies for the stuff that's changing. But if we're talking about another provider like Spacelift, they've built a, a very powerful policy layer using open policy agent that sits on top of this. So you can set really arbitrary, it, it, you know, it, so it uses Rego and Rego is a fully fledged language for defining policies. So uh, you, so you want basically your tool, you want to use basically vanilla open, so, uh, open source Terraform for, for that to be able to work is the best way I can explain it. What, we, what we're doing at Cloud Posse, and we went into this a little bit before, and it, it, I owe a uh, more thorough explanation, but we're, we're using this concept of a stack configuration that's in YAML and then we, we write adapters for it. So we have an adapter to read this stack configuration for Terraform Cloud. We have an adapter, when I call it an adapter, it's really just a Terraform module. So we have a Terraform module that reads this configuration and provisions your Terraform Cloud. We have a Terraform module that reads this configuration and provisions your Spacelift Cloud. Uh, we, you could write something that generates an Atlantis configuration from this. You could, you could use our, our, our command line tool called Atmos 
which reads the same stack configuration as another adapter, so to say. So this is how we do, this is how we use the stack configuration on, on the command line. And in our case, we, uh, we, all of our configuration is 100% in YAML and Terraform is really for all the business logic uh, for how to provision something and has no configuration. So it, it, the, the difference between that and like the Terragrunt approach and the Terragrunt approach, your configuration and your business logic is in the same place. And that's what we're trying to get away from. Gotcha, appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, uh, can I add something? Hey, yeah. Hey guys, so uh, uh, I want to support what you said, Eric, about vanilla Terraform now being uh, much better than before, uh, including the new change direction, uh, sorry, change directory flag, if anyone tests that. So there is a flag that you can use so you can run Terraform from top level into subfolders. So that, that, that was not it exists. Oh, before. nice. So nice. What yeah, I'm, they made it a real pain in the butt before to do that. Yeah, what um, I'm doing now is I'm, I'm at the top root level of the repo and just calling all the stacks like subfolders from one place using the nice. make file, of course. Yeah. So that's, right. I think this is one of the big reasons that you don't need to switch to into Teradrunt. I like Teradrunt, by the way. But now Terraform is, is more sophisticated actually. So for newcomers, just keep it stupid simple. Use vanilla Terraform as much as possible. So yeah. that's one of the best advice you can have, yeah. Uh, on that note in general, I think it's like, wait until you encounter the problems before you pick the tool that solves the problems because you might not have the problems the tool was meant to solve. 